Uh, my name is Tom Abbott. I'm going to be hosting this evening and speaking. Um, and as you can see, the, the evening is dedicated to Brazil and the wealth of wonderful wildlife that we can that we can find there. Um, I'm speaking to you from Cheltenham, a chilly Cheltenham this evening. Um, and I have we have speakers from all around, and I'm sure you're all joining us from, from different parts of the, the country and perhaps um, all around the world. So thank you very much again for, for joining us. Um, so I'll run through how the evening is going to work. So I'm joined, I'm delighted to be joined by three of my, my colleagues and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and fellow leaders um, and Nature Trek staff. So we have Kevin Owsby, um, who leads um, tours for us and traveled out to Brazil on the Just Jaguars tour a couple of years ago as part of a group. So um, delighted to have Kevin along. Good evening. Kevin will talk after me. Um, we then have we have Marcus, Marcus Felix, who is a very experienced um, nature trek leader. He's led lots of our uh, group tours out in Brazil, through the Pantanal, through uh, down to the Guazu Falls, around the southern Amazon. So very, very experienced and has led us tours for us for, I think, um, yeah, over, over 10 years. So Marcus is speaking to us from Coyaba, um, the sort of gateway to the Pantanal there. So um, um, hello, Marcus, and great to have you along. And to uh, finish off the evening, we're going to be hearing from Matty. Matt's a colleague of mine in, in the office at Nature Trek HQ, uh, manages a range of tours and, and, and leads them as well. And Matt will be covering the, the talk about the Pantanal cruise, which he, uh, which he led um, last year. So throughout the show, um, please feel free to, to, to put comments in the chat and let us know where, where, you're, where you're watching from, any questions you have. Um, good to put the questions in the actual questions and answers box. There's a dedicated box for that. <clears throat> and then we'll run through those questions um, at the end of the show. And we can all, um, yeah, you can learn as much as you can about Brazil and uh, and um, hopefully entice you on a, on a, on a, on a fantastic holiday there. Um, so I'm going to kick off and I'm going to talk to you about some of the options. There's so many options for a holiday to Brazil. Lots of them centred around the Pantanal, but with other areas to visit as well, of course. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview and sort of run through how our how our Just Jaguars tour works in terms of where we stay and what we like to see and touch on some other areas that combine with the Pantanal um, to make uh, to, to make a sort of all round um, wonderful holiday uh, to Brazil. So I'll just start with this with the, with this slide here um, showing you know, a, bit, a bit of the geography and a couple of um, different colour um, you know, blobs there on my on my screen just to give you a bit of an idea of things. So here's Sao Paulo, the, the, the green dot, and we fly into Sao Paulo on a direct flight to start pretty much all of our all of our tours. I haven't got enough time this evening to cover everywhere that we're that we visit, of course, um, but just want to pick out a few places. So the red area there, that's the, the area that we're visiting in the northern Pantanal. And there's Coyaba, where where, where Marcus is uh, is is uh, talking talking um, from tonight. Um, to the north, that pink area is the southern Amazon. So we we now offer we we now offer a holiday that combines those two areas. There's a short flight uh, from Coyaba to Alta Foresta, and you can easily combine those two uh, those two fantastic regions. Way down to the south, um, down near on the, on the Paraguay um, Argentinian border, right down there, that blue blob, that's the Iguazu Falls, and we of course have a we have a tour that combines the Pantanal and the Iguazu Falls, and you can also see there's the yellow. And there's a yellow dot um, over to the further to the east, um, and that's that's the area of the wolf camps where we visit to see maned wolf as part of our Brazil's Big Five tour. So that's just a little bit of the geography, and we combine the the main wolf area and the wolf camps in the Paranaíba head, head, Headwaters National Park with the Pantanal. So it's sort of those three tours that combine um, with the with the fantastic Pantanal. So it's the Pantanal they're going to focus on um, initially here, and it's this huge area about the size of the UK that's represented here by this sort of light green uh, shading on the map. <clears throat> so as I said, we fly into Sao Paulo and onto Cuiaba, and then we access the, just the very northern um, section of the world's largest wetland. And it is um, an incredible place, absolutely, absolutely teeming with, with wildlife. So when, once we reach Cuiaba, we hop into a sort of conventional minibus on the Just Jaguars tour and drive to the town of Pocane. Um, and that really is then the the, the sort of the gateway to the northern uh, the northern uh, yeah, Pantanal, um, and we then join the Trans Pantanera, and we hop into a um, sort of a more raised up safari truck style vehicle, and then we travel all the way along this 147 kilometer um, uh, Trans Pantanera road. And as you can see there, there's various lodges dotted along the way, 
um, along this along this road, and it really is a, a safari, a fantastic safari in itself. Um, traveling along here, so this is the sort of vehicle we use. Um, a really nice view. You can get a you know bit, bit more elevated, um, scan out over the surrounding habitat, and uh, and really have, have a have, have a great chance of seeing all the wildlife that's that, that's around us. And it really is um, an area that's teeming with with life. So any bodies of water that we pass that we that we pass, there's over a hundred. I think it's 122. Marcus might correct me on the exact number. There's around 122. Um, wooden bridges that we're crossing, and lots of areas of of, 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 stand, of water like this. We'll be teeming with there's wood storks in here, great egrets. There'll be kokoi herons, capped herons, rufescent tiger herons, various different species of kingfisher. Um, every one of these little dots here um, is a is a yakari caiman. Um, absolutely, there's, there's you know, incredible incredible numbers here. Um, Thirty to forty million. Uh, the estimates are just are just crazy, um, and the number of came and um, really you know, really are staggering it's one of the reasons why jaguar are doing so well because they they prey heavily on um came in, um, in this in this area of the area of the pantanal they've become very very well adapted to, to taking them um, as a, one of their main food sources it's a brilliant tour for photography um kevin's uh, very is a He's a, he's a first class photographer and he'll be talking to you about his experience so i'm not going to dwell too much on it but you can get incredibly co close up views like this of, the, of a caiman eating a catfish and you can all have a moment to try and guess what this caiman has been uh, has been snacking on they have a very uh, wide-ranging diet and th this chap has taken taken on the risky challenge of, uh, of trying to eat a, a brazilian porcupine a bit, of a bit of a spiky meal there for that uh, for that caiman but it's highlight after highlight as we're traveling um, to our first lodge, so we wouldn't have even reached our first lodge. This is the tallest flying bird in the in in the Americas, the Javaru stork, um, standing at around yeah, yeah five five foot tall and a huge eight foot long uh, wingspan. Absolutely amazing bird, fishing here close to the vehicle. Capybaras um, are almost at every turn grazing the lawns of the lodges. Any sort of wet areas of the Transpantan area where we like to see this uh, um, th this species, this endearing animal. You can see there it's got a Sort of scent gland on its forehead. That's a. Uh, it's called a Murillo, and it's a. Uh, it's more enlarged on the males, but it is found on both sexes. If you're if you're wondering what that sort of lump is on the forehead there. So we'll travel along the Transpantan area, seeing all this incredible wildlife, stopping and starting, and then we'll reach Pusto Alegre, where we stayed for the first two nights of the Just Jaguars holiday, and with this seven-kilometer-long private driveway, really nice mix of habitats: open grassland, gallery forest, lots of wet areas falls um, to, to, to enjoy and search for wildlife. It is the more basic of the accommodate, three accommodations we use, but we pick it, you know, of course, for the wildlife. Rooms are still air conditioned and clean and comfortable, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's more basic of the three, but it's a fantastic area to, to, to explore and just settle in really to the, to the Pantanal and, and the surrounding wildlife. We'll get out um, exploring that drive, private driveway, lots of pools and ponds, and hopefully come across one of the stars of the, the Pantanal, the wonderful Brazilian tapir, an adult and a and a youngster here, and we'll also get out after after dark, doing some um, spotlighting, getting out with a powerful powerful torch and, and shining around and hoping to hoping to find wildlife that way. Another star, of course, is the is the giant anteater. I think when I talk to people about to, about Brazil and the Pantanal, um, just under Jaguar comes the comes the giant anteater, and uh, yeah, what a fantastic animal! No, over around two meters long. Half of that is this meter long, big bushy tail, and this one carrying a, a youngster. You can see here clearly and that tail, perfect for keeping them, you know, keeping them cool in the heat of the day and, and wrapping up warm when it chills off at um, at night. It's a yeah, a really sought after species, and we actually offer um, Pus Alegre. We, we were able to see them there in, in some years, and there's also um, another lodge, uh, Puvio Lodge, just slightly further north. So this northern end of the Transpantan area is the key area. Um, to try and see um, giant anteater. And we, we offer extensions for those that really want an extra chance of seeing the species. You can tack on some nights to the Just Jaguars tour to, to try and see them. Hyacinth macaws, this incredibly um, beautiful, the world's largest macaw species, with this big, powerful bill crunching through this palm nuts. They breed in the grounds at Pusso Alegre. So we have, we have a fabulous chance of seeing them here and a whole range of other um, amazing, amazing bird life um, at every turn. Greater rear here on the left, they might be, they'll be strutting around on the sort of more open 
um, grasslands and, and ranch land that we see in this in this northern end of the road, and the very photogenic and beautiful um, chestnut eared Arasari there, a member of the Toucan family. So after two nights at Bapusuleg, we're back onto the Transpantanero, and we're travelling all the way to the to the end, essentially. And that's where we board a motorboat, zoom up river for around half an hour, and then we reach uh, the Jaguar float out. And here is an aerial view of the float out, right in the heart of that core Jaguar zone, where they're at their sort of highest density, and we have the very best chance of seeing them from here. So we base ourselves on the suites for the Jaguar, for the Just Jaguars tour. These are these rooms here. The large rooms and then there's the, the the standard rooms which we use for some of the other itineraries um just next to it just to give you a bit of idea of what the what the floatel um is all about and what that what it looks like there really lovely spacious rooms on, on the suites there's a, a view there and an excellent views um, from your room um, really but it's uh it's action packed it's, it's morning and afternoon boat excursions and a bit of a rest in the middle of the day is the typical sort of typical day when you're on the floatel you're spending a lot of time away from the floatel cruising around the different um, um, river channels and tributaries, uh, searching for wildlife. Here's Marcus here um, with, with one of our groups um, out on the out on the sm smaller um, motorboat. You, we have a maximum group of 12, so you, you sit in six um, rows of, well, two rows of six. So everyone has a, has a great view, has an edge. And it's just a fantastic experience heading out into this incredible environment, um, searching for searching for wildlife. And it's it's called the Just Jaguars um, holiday, but of course, you know, if you've read any of the trip reports or, um, or, or or looked at the looked at some of the the galleries online, you'll know you'll you'll see it's so much more than that. And we're we're enjoying everything while we're here, whilst we're searching for the for the big target of the, of the jaguar. These are black skimmers. There might be um, large bill terns, yellow bill terns, um, there are lots of other species that we could see. You can see here the really long, sort of elongated lower mandible here on the on this black skimmer. And we might come around the next bend, there'll be a king vulture perched up in an overhanging tree. And we just really can come across wildlife at every turn. It's the giant otter zone as well as the jaguar zone. We have, we'd have never miss seeing this, this, this amazing uh, mustard lid. Um, and they, it really strikes you how large they are, around, 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 around five foot long with a big paddle-like tail. Um, they really, really are an apex predator. They travel around in big family groups, uh, very, very, very noisy and feeding. Um, a lot on, on, on fish and having very close views. A fantastic species. One we've got a, a very, very good chance to, to find and we make a real effort to, to find them and spend time with them as well. But the big aim, the, 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 the main aim, of course, is to is, is to find Jaguar on our Just Jaguars tour. And we're spending four nights on the Floatel um, in the very best place, visiting the very best areas. So we have a superb chance of, of, of often multiple views and we're searching for maybe a little gap in the in the in the gallery forest on the riverbank here, where this uh, beautiful animal is resting. And we have time to see some behaviour as well, some different behaviours. You might be seeing these animals multiple multiple times. And this is a an adult and a young and a, and a youngster um, having a bit of a tug of war with the yellow anaconda. This was taken a few years back. Um, uh, quite a you know, one in a million photo there. But we're seeing we often see hunting, uh, mating interactions between adults and youngsters so it really is um it, it, it's some, some breathtaking uh, sightings can can be achieved and i'm often asked you know will, will, will we try and have private sightings um you you, you have to be prepared in in the, in the in the in this area to often watch jaguars with other boats um but we often we will always strike out and try and find our own um, animals as well and this is a moment uh, for me when we came around the corner we went north from the from the from the floatel and before any other boats could come into the area and um, we we struck out on our own and found these two cubs swimming across the channel and with mum calling loudly from the from the shoreline um on, on the other side of the river um and of course yeah um as that as that unfolded we we um we, we hung back and the, and the youngsters um bounded up off the up, up the seven bank opposite and it was just one of those magical encounters where no one else was around and we had that uh, that sort of that interaction um, all to ourselves and we we do aim to do that and we're in the best place for it striking out um before other people coming from further away can get there so after our fill of jaguars if there's ever really such a thing as that we're back onto the transpantanero and we're heading back across these um uh, fairly um, rickety looking bridges I'm, i must say you might think blind me i'm not going to drive across that in a large um safari truck there's a few too many holes but um 
no, they're very they're very safe, and it's a it's an it's an incredible journey. I'm um, looking around over this surrounding habitat for for lots of wildlife, and we finish that on the um, at South World Pansau Lodge on the Paxian River here, searching for for some fantastic birding. We spend three nights here, um, uh, finishing off with some lovely walks, some more boat trips. You might see being seeing sun bitterns here. Um, wonderful Agami heron is one of the stars that we can hopefully see um, from the lodge here, as well as uh, yeah, various various other species um, as well. All five of South America's kingfishers can be seen with relative ease, and there really is a great abundance of, of, of food here for them. Um, this is green and rufous kingfisher. We've also got a chance of, of, of green kingfisher, Amazon, um, pygmy, and ringed. So all five species can be seen um, with, with relative ease and, and pose often very well for, for photos. Just around the lodge, the, the marvellous Toco too can often visit in the morning when uh, seed and fruit are put out so you can rest and have a, have a cup of tea and, and, and relax sat outside the front of the lodge and there's these amazing birds coming in at close range. And in recent years, um, there's a little there's a little screen where we've got a chance of seeing the, the fantastic ocelot coming in as well. So that's a whistle stop really through the, the step by step of how the, the, the Just Jaguars tour works. And it really is a, a wonderful holiday packed with highlights. And we also head down to the Guazu Falls um, on, on, a, on our uh, group tour. And it's a, a very good option for, for an extension as well. And it's just breathtaking um, to, to see the falls from both the Argentinian National Park and the Brazilian National Park. And we base ourselves at a, base ourselves at a nice little jungle lodge in, in Argentina. <clears throat> And we'll get out and do some some really good, uh, really great birding um, around the falls and just taking in the beauty of them from, from every angle. This beautiful Atlantic rainforest habitat um, all around the falls. You might see great dusky swift hunkering down on their nest site, actually on the falls. Amazing birds. Um, or black-fronted piping guan here is one of the specialities you might be able to find in the in the in this Atlantic rainforest habitat. Or a Surakel trogan here, beautiful beautiful bird that could be flitting around in the uh in the, in this habitat so it's a it's a special place um down around around the falls and we'll spend three nights down there um doing some really great birding um and uh, and, and appreciating the magnificent falls so in uh, i'm just going to finish with a few slides on our on the, on the southern amazon and the tour we've more recently set up um, sort of combining the pantanal um, and this uh, and this very rich area of course with a whole different suite of species and, and and so much to so much to see here, and this is an aerial view of the Juruena River, and the and the the, the Southward Amazon Lodge, is is located just in this sort of larger tract of forest on the left here. So we we we're, we're based um for this leg of the journey. So we will start with four nights, um in the in the Southern Amazon, um in this twenty five thousand acre, um, reserve uh, with with lots of you know fantastic forest and extensive trails. Um, and towers to view from um, eight miles of, of riverfront from the actual lodge grounds and areas to get out and, and drive around as well trails around the forest that we can we can move around so it's a it's a super base um, and, and, and a, some fantastic species can be can be seen there and none more so than the mighty harpy eagle um, so it was uh, incredible to, to be running a tour to see the once near mythical uh, jaguar and also harpy eagle which until recently, was 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 incredibly difficult to see, and now they can really be seen in you know in, in one holiday. Um, so they're doing very well in this area, harpy eagles. This is a juvenile bird and um, sort of fully grown adult size, but in that juvenile plumage. And you can see from this photo how thick the, the the legs are here and the size of those talons. They'll be feeding on on sloths and and uh, and howler monkeys and, and very large prey items. And there's there's been over thirty nests uh, found in the in, in the state. Of, uh, of the Mato Grosso here, um, and uh, yeah, each each season, we, we, whenever we visit, there's typically a nest that we're able to um, to, to 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 view from a tower. Um, there's some fa fantastic work going on when I was there. I met a French researcher who's finding these nests, working with landowners, um, studying them, and we're able to you know to to view and get some incredible you know, in incredible encounters with these with these magnificent birds. I say incredible encounters. This is this is definitely one of them. This is a youngster that actually flew onto the tower um, and peered down on one of the on on, on some on some guests. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, I, 
you, you see the size of this animal and i remember talking to the to the person in question they said they were really quite scared of when this huge eagle just landed right next to them and uh, yeah what a, what a formidable bird again look at the size of the talons and the, and the legs there so a fantastic chance to to see how people with with a bit of luck um an adult an adult can be can be possible as well so it's uh they're really doing well in in, in that area and it's a uh, yeah it's a real real posit positive uh positive story there um it's it's the, the tour is titled the birds and mammals of the of the, of the amazon and pantanal so it's a bit it's it's, it's more it's more bird focused than the, the than the just jaguars tour but you're enjoying everything and there are some very special mammals to see um in the in the, in the southern amazon um, area as well this um white-nosed bearded saki um is is one of them um the the, the guys there sort of follow the follow the the, the movements of these animals they're, they're an endangered primate species and they'll They'll track them, follow them around, know where the fruiting trees are. We have a very good chance of of seeing them, as well as grey woolly monkey, the lovely soft fur of the of, of the grey woolly monkey. So they're sort of two very special um, endangered uh, primates that do very well within this sort of fully protected. You know, no hunting happens here at all in this area, in this uh, here in the in the in this vast area from the lodge, and where we can see these these animals living happily. Um, in this uh, in this fantastic habitat, so our, our groups have very good success with seeing those two species, and also very you know, great success in, in in more recent tours of, of very close views of tapir. There's an area where we can visit um, to see uh, to see tapir in the evening. Often you'll be having dinner, and then a guy will say, "Oh, the tapir is visiting this uh, this open this clearing near the lodge," and you'll be able to head off just a few minutes from the lodge and uh, and have some really close up. Uh, views of this uh, of, the, of this special animal so there's there's lots and lots of uh, of highlights to to enjoy here the towers are sort of set within the within the tree canopy and so you're sort of really in amongst it there'll be there'll be birds you know flitting around on the branches just uh you know, just in front of you or maybe some primates moving through and these towers have been moved to the to the sort of the best sort of fruiting trees and so we're able to react and, and give ourselves the best chance of really seeing as much wildlife as possible so Lots of activities to enjoy here. This is an Amazonian um, umbrella bird. This amazing sort of wattle of, um, of, of feathers here um, is, a, is one of the stars um, you know, in and around the lodge. And there's, and there's lots of others. When we're out on the water, we might see um, the bizarre hoatzin, or stink bird, as they sometimes call them in, in South America, feeding pretty much purely on leaves. So you can see where they, where they get their name from with that, uh, with that uh, you know, vegetarian uh, diet there. And it's a fantastic location for your large macaws as well. They do very well. Though. This is um, blue and gold macaw. There's also red and green um, and, and, and scarlet macaw as well. So it's very good for your large macaws and a whole suite of Amazonian species that, of course, you won't find um, down, in the, down in the Pantanal. So it makes a very good combination um, um, indeed. And uh, yeah, well worth, well, well worth looking, at, uh, looking at that holiday. So that's just a bit of an overview of, of some of the offerings, some of the areas that we combine with the Pantanal. Most people will want to of, of course, go primarily for the Pantanal, but there are other areas as well to look at. And I've just touched on a, on a couple there. So um, I'll finish there. Um, this is my, my last slide there. And I will hand over to, to Kevin, who's going to talk to you about his experiences um, over, in the, over in the Pantanal. Take it away, Kevin. Good evening, everyone. And uh, it's, it's a real something different for me today because I'm actually presenting uh, my talk on the basis of myself being a client for Nature Trek. I went to uh, Brazil on the Just Jaguars tour as a client uh, in June 22. I should have gone a year or two earlier, but um, I got locked into lockdown like most of us did. And unfortunately, the trip was delayed uh, as a result of that. However, uh, I just want to show you this evening my experience of, of that tour as a client. And it was fantastic. That's the, the first word I would like to use. It was absolutely tremendous. So uh, without further ado, can you see my map, Tom? Just my map? Yeah, that's that's great. That's, that's great. great. Thank idea. you. Well, Tom's already told you, uh, I've given you some idea about where um, we go on the tour. So obviously with the UK, I went via British Airways and spent an overnight in Sao Paulo down here. And then the next day flew up to Cuiabá, which is just where the, the red dot is here. And the next day started uh, on the tour, which was absolutely fantastic, as I mentioned, mentioned a minute ago. <coughs> Excuse me. So here is the beginning of the 
Transpantanera, that very long, 140-kilometer-long uh, dirt track. And this is the entrance, the official entrance, and uh, you're on your um, uh, uh, four-wheel drive tr truck at this point, and it's great fun, absolutely exhilarating. In fact, the entire trip was just wonderfully enjoyable. Uh, it was one of those trips that you go on and you come back at the end, and then you think, crikey, I'd really love to do that immediately, straight again. Uh, so that, that that hopefully gives you a bit of an impression about how I found this trip. So here's the, the, the beginning of the road uh, all the way down to uh, the, the place where we pick up the boat. But before then, of course, as Tom's mentioned, we also make a, a stop at one of the other lodges uh, going along. So this is the rickety sort of bridge. This, this one is actually the longest bridge on the Transpantanera. And it's actually a bit of video I'm going to show you now. I actually walked across it, not because I was a bit worried that the, the truck would go through, but just to give you a bit of a flavor of uh, the experience. So you've got water on both sides of the, of the bridge here. Now you're only about three or four feet above the surface of the water. And as, as Tom mentioned, although it does look a bit rickety, as you can see here, there is a great experience to go along uh, and drive along this road. But the wildlife is absolutely everywhere on both sides. And you need to keep your eyes peeled the whole time to be able, you, you might miss things. There's just so much to take in. And uh, one of the first things you encounter are, are the rears. And uh, this is the, the uh, greater rear uh, in amongst a group of termite mounds. There are lots of termites in the drier parts of, of this part of the world. Uh, so that's a fairly easy bird to see because of its size. It's, it's a, an, a, the South American equivalent of an ostrich in, in many ways. But there are other large birds as well. This one's called the bare-faced Curacao. It's a female, this one, and they're often found pottering around uh, some of the lodge grounds. So you've got a reasonable chance of catching up with uh, plenty of these. But because of the geographical location in the, well, it's actually the largest tropical wetland in the world, the Pantanal, water birds and birds that are found around water are going to be the more common uh, sightings. So here, for example, this bird is called the black capped Donacobius. They've got some wonderful names, some of these birds in South and Central America. And this one is very fond of sort of reed beds or uh, water beds, sorry, water plants or plants are, are growing along uh, the river, particularly in the Pantanal, not just exclusively there though. And obviously uh, Tom mentioned earlier about the uh, uh, toucans and this is an arasari though it's a relative of the the uh, the, the toucan this is the ches chestnut eared arasari and this one was actually coming to one of the feeders that had been uh, be that was being used in the grounds of the lodge so again colorful birds almost coming to your your veranda really in in your lodge so you you've got bird activity everywhere now, this part of the world is um, very uh, popular for birds of prey as well. And one of the commoner ones you can find there is this. This is a snail kite. And I don't know if you can make out on this picture, but it's actually holding a snail. There, there is a, a species of snail that occurs in the fresh water of the Pantanal called the apple snail. And interestingly enough, it's a very important species, the apple snail, because at different times of the year, the, the, there is the wet season and the dry season. And in the uh, dry season, the, the apple snail is very important at dis, uh, basically munching up all the fallen vegetation, which has fallen into the water and is a very important species from that point of view. But you see the hooked bill on this bird, which is brilliantly evolved uh, as a sharp winkler, if you like, but being able to pull out the, the flesh from inside the snail. By the way, these are all, not only are they all my photographs you're seeing here, but they're all taken on this one trip. Here's another species of bird of prey. This is the savannah hawk, another very common bird as we'll go along uh, en route. Here's another one of the savannah hawks. This one's a young bird. It's actually uh, disemboweling a frog on top of a, a termite mound there. And they're very common along the, the routes of the, of the waterways, either from the boat or, or from the jeep as we're, or the, the, the four-wheel drive vehicle rather, as we're moving along. And probably one of the larger birds of prey to look out for is this. This is the crested uh, caracara, uh, quite a large bird of prey. 
uh, scavengers a lot of the time as well. And this one's just perched out on one of the many uh, dried dead branches that occur in this part of the world. And one smaller bird of prey, this is called the bat falcon. Uh, not specifically because it catches bats, it tends to catch a lot of birds that are coming in to roost just as it's getting dusk and also earlier in the morning as they're, as they're perhaps leaving roosts and so on. So that's where this bird gets its name from. It's I always think of it as the sort of South American version of our European hobby, really. Very, very similar in, in many respects with the coloration, particularly underneath there. But it's not just uh, falcons and, and, and so on. We got owls here too. This is a great horned owl, which is the largest or one of the largest owls uh, in this part of the world. And we came across this one, just uh, sat out on a branch uh, at dawn one morning and we were just walking along and we just heard this call and looked up and straight above us was this three foot tall uh, great horned owl. Uh, and another night bird to be found here is this. This is the great Potu, the largest of all the potus, and the potus are relatives of the night jars, and they rely on this fantastic uh, camouflage. In case you didn't know, by the way, it's the one on the left, not the forked tree on the right. Uh, but they have this fantastic camouflage, and they sit out during the day, uh, relying on that camouflage to be unnoticed. And you can just make out the eye there on the top of this bird's head. And uh, they've really got to keep your eyes peeled to try and find one of these. Luckily, our guide found one and got everybody onto it. And uh, these wonderful comical birds, the toucan, for those of you who are old enough, might remember the Guinness advert. Well, this is the Guinness bird, the toco toucan. And uh, yeah, this, this one does come to, to one of the lodges, uh, to one of the bird feeders there. Great, colorful birds to find. Some smaller birds are obviously as well, and this one's the great Kiskadi. It gets its name Kiskadi from the call it makes, and you can often pick that call out from the noise of the river or, of the, or you know, just the background from quite a distance. We've got a very sort of distinctive call. So this is um, the sort of boat arrangement as, as Tom made out, and I'll just play a little bit of video just to give you a bit of an idea of, uh, this is us cruising along in the boat, uh, looking out or moving from point A to point B to try and find jaguars. This is how we make our way along. And then in the next scene, you'll see us approaching the, the Flotel, uh, the second of our accommodations on this tour. And it really is a fantastic place to spend some time. It it's absolutely idyllic. The important thing in many respects is it's fully air conditioned. And, you know, this is quite a, a, a tropical area. So by the time you've been out all day, it's really heavenly to come back into somewhere like this uh, with air conditioning and a wonderful setting, as Tom's already made out. And this is what it looks like inside. There's a little bit of a lecture room here. You'll get talks perhaps in the evenings, maybe about anacondas, maybe about the Cayman, maybe about uh, jaguars. And a, a nice little dining room in the in the back here with a small bar associated with it as well. And this is just a view on a cloudy evening, actually, which was unusual uh, from the from my veranda, in fact. So this will give you a bit of a perspective of what what to expect when you get there. So kingfishers obviously are fond of water. And as Tom's mentioned, you'll often see them perch quite closely. And this one was actually right next to the flotel. This is a green kingfisher, a female, uh, perched quite close to the flotel itself. But as Tom mentioned, we will get other water birds as well. These are large build turns at the side of the river as we're going along. And the boatmen will stop when anything other than jaguars perhaps turns up. And you'll, you'll sometimes get close to birds like the black skimmer that like Tom was mentioning earlier on. So there is plenty opportunity to stop and see other things as well as the jaguars. So this is a rufescent tiger heron, uh, a juvenile bird just perched at the side of the river. And again, the driver of the boat will stop and let everybody get a good look at these, as well as birds like this one. This is the sun bitten, a very shy and skulking bird, but reasonably common in this part of the world. You just got to keep your eyes peeled, really. And as Tom mentioned, perhaps the largest bird you'll see there is the jabiru. The uh, this is this 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 was actually on one of the nests. Uh, it's got a nest rather uh, in the, one of the lodges that we stay at. And this one's just feeding on a fish that its mate had brought to it. Huge birds, though, over five feet tall. 
And then another uh, sort of bird to find in this neck of the woods is the um, rufous-tailed jacamar here with its uh, uh, quarter dragonfly. They're relatives of bee eaters, the, uh, the jacamars, wonderful birds to find. But as Tom mentioned, uh, one of the spectacular birds to find here is the uh, hyacinth macaw. These were very much threatened with the pet trade industry at one point, but their numbers have really picked up. And the Pantanal is probably one of the best places in the world, well, in Brazil, to see them. You don't get them outside of uh, South America anyway. Um, this one's actually feeding on palms as well. But this was an extraordinary experience. I was photographing this um, hyacinth macaw, which was trying to get into a, a nest hole here. And I just pressed the button at the right moment because in the nest already was a barn owl, a Western barn owl. You can see with it. And so they came face to face uh, in the nest hole, which was quite a wonderful experience. Um, if you're lucky, you might come across an anaconda. We did. And uh, this was just actually in the grounds of one of the lodges. It wasn't an adult. It was only about 12 feet long, this one. So uh, this is yellow anaconda. Um, but keep your eyes peeled again. Don't just look up, look down as well. Um, Cayman, as um, Tom mentioned, this is the number one prey item for the jaguar in this part of the world, Jacare Cayman, um, that you can get very, very close to them, uh, especially when you're out on the boat. Uh, luckily for us, they're fish eaters, not human eaters. So, uh, you know, we, we, you know, you needn't to be too afraid from uh, that point of view. But again, great animals to see and photograph. Much less common, <coughs> excuse me, is marsh deer. And uh, this was in the grounds of one of the lodges. It, it was knee deep in soft uh, waterside vegetation and beautiful animal just to have uh, in, in the grounds of the, the lodge that we were at. And uh, also, as we were cruising along the river, keep a lookout for black howler monkey. This is the female of that species. Plenty of wildlife to see wherever you look. You really do need your camera uh, all the time. Uh, here's a, another perspective of the capybara, the world's largest rodent. It's about the size of a good going spaniel. And here's a family party of three or four of them with a mum, with a mum there, or presumably mum, might be dad. But also one of the um, species I particularly wanted to see was giant river otter, in addition to uh, the uh, jaguar, of course. And uh, I was not disappointed. I've been to South America several times before, never seen jaguar, never seen giant river otter. And I thought this was going to be the trip that, that I would hopefully see both of them. And as you see here, this is the giant river otter, a spectacular animal. Uh, have a very, very high pitched call and everybody can usually pick that call out from a reasonable distance. So, you know, we, you, they, they're very they can sp spend a lot of time underwater. But when they come to the surface, they're very, very social animals and give a lot of calls. And that often gives their presence away. Well, but for me, Jaguar was the actual target I particularly wanted to see, and we were, I, we were not let down. I think we recorded seven different individuals in my particular trip, and we got fantastic views of them. Here's a group of three. This is an adult known as Patricia and two very well-grown cubs. And so this was taken from a boat. You don't get off the boat, obviously, uh, because it is a little bit risky, uh, but you are safe in the boat. This just gives you a bit of an idea. There's two people here, photo of one person and, a, and, a, and a, somebody else photographing jaguars. That gives you a, diff a bit of a perspective of how close you can get to these animals. They're the world's, uh, they've got the strongest bite of any cat in the world. And the other thing they have, they got the longest canine teeth of any cat. Um, and the bite is stronger than any other cat, including lion uh, and any other cat you can mention from um, Africa. And they're also fantastic swimmers. This one's just uh, literally dived after a caiman. It missed it on this occasion, but we did see two kills of caiman made during the, our trip there. So that was a fantastic experience. They took my breath away, though, the jaguars, because having seen lots of cats in Africa, they were just so quick, the jaguars. I couldn't get my camera sorted in time before they jumped in and killed a caiman. It was just unbelievably quick, a wonderful experience. And so that's my perspective on this wonderful trip. And as I mentioned, it would be one I would dearly love to do 
instantly, this, uh, as soon as I'd finished it, go and do it all again. But as Tom said, things weren't all finished just because we'd finished on the Flotel. On our way back, we stopped off at the uh, the other lodge that Tom mentioned and managed to get some views of this ocelot. They are wild animals. They just come uh, to food put out for them by the lodge. So that was another bonus, really, uh, to, to see these. And another couple of water birds to finish with. This is um, the Plumbius ibis with this lovely long beak and very common waterside bird. And these birds, which live up to their name of Southern Screamer, this, these two were just stood on a bush here screaming for all they were worth with these spikes on the corner of their wings here, very primitive looking birds. But just to finish, just to say, A, that it was such a wonderful experience and I would can't, can't recommend it highly enough to you. But if you're into astrophotography, there's virtually no light pollution in this part of the world at all. And this is a picture of the Milky Way I took from my uh, balcony on the Flotel uh, before coming home. So with that, I'll say, Thank you very much for listening. So this is um, a map. When you fly into Pantanal, so you get the area of the Pantanal show by the red. And the Pantanal is amazing because the Pantanal, it is uh, governed by the water system. So you have basically two seasons in the Pantanal. I mean, despite the four seasons, we, we rely on two seasons mainly. We have the wet season, which is the summer, and we've got the dry season, which is the winter, winter in Brazilian standards, right? But um, during the wet season, you can see how the water progressively comes from the east part of the tableland on the first map, right? November, December, January. It's right now in January. The water is more or less between the two and the first two maps of the Pantanal, right? And the water keeps running through the center of the floodplain. Between January and March, it will be like that. In the third map that I'm pointing with the, the pointer, the third map. So the water will be mainly concentrated at that point. So the area of the Pantanal as Kelvin said, it's the world's largest flatlands, and it's listed in the 150, 150 wetlands of Ramsar project. Um, there's wetlands in Botswana, wetlands in South America, like in Venezuela. There's wetlands in Camargue Island, but the Pantanal is the largest of the wetlands in the world. And then, so in, between the months of March and uh, June, the water keeps moving. And when you guys show up, show, show up here between the months of May and October, the water has pretty much gone, has gone down through the Cuiva River, taking down to the Paraguay River and keeps going down to the Lake, Lake River. So during the six months of the wet season, we can sub include uh, Another ecosystem, another, um, um, like, how can I say? We can, uh, January, February, March will be the flood season. April, May, June will be the draining season. Uh, June, July, August will be more or less a dry season. And um, September, October, November, December will be the beginning of the rainy season. But that, that not always happens. Uh, last year, for example, we didn't have a single drop of rain until until the end of December. Um, so this is a little bit of the uh, floodings of the Pantanal rain season. And let's talk about the area. The Pantanal is subdivided in 12 uh, sub-regions. We are going to be visiting the top part, north, northern top part of Pocone, which is the area of Pocone. And from there, you pick the bus, the safari bus, as Tom explained, and Kevin, and you drive across the Transpontanera Highway. But let's look at this map from the top area to the bottom, south, to the Campo Grande area in the southern Pantanal. You have approximately 500 kilometers north to south and 300 kilometers uh, east to west. So the Pantanal, um, the most the most wet 
wettest part of the Pantanal, it is in the center. Uh, you see so many rivers are coming from north, from east, and from the southern Pantanal and heading into the Pantanal. So there's famous rivers like Piaba, uh, Kidawana River, Miranda River, and um, they're all running to the Cueva or running to the Paraguay or to the nearest river that is running to the Paraguay. The Paraguay is the most important river of the Pantanal and is the main drainer of all of this floodplain. Uh, so with the setting and the rising of the water, the water goes out, spills out to the, to the floodplain, to the riverbanks, out of the fields and floods, maybe 90%, 80% uh, of the area, only a few spots will be dry, and the water will be there for a couple of months, maybe three months, until April, May. So when the water goes down, the water will be leaving behind. It starts to recede back to the river and will leave behind masses of fishes, masses of ap um, apple snails, like Kevin mentioned and showed a wonderful picture of that. And these species left out in the smaller pools uh, apple snails, millions of fishes, all different sorts of, sorts of fishes. This will be full for the masses of the hundreds and hundreds of wood storks, great egrets, um, you know, uh, uh, snow egrets, jabros, uh, uh, maguire storks. They will be gathering by the thousands, by the thousands and hundreds all together. It's just an amazing thing to see. And uh, it makes the perfect habitat for the for the birds, such as uh, uh, topo toucans. You see topo toucans uh, flying over, sitting on the riverbanks, catching fruits from the cecropia trees, the pioneer tree, typically common in the area of the Pantanal. And also, oops. also you are able to see the. Uh, high sea macaws, which is one of the uh, the largest uh, largest species of macaws down in this part of the country, and you can easily find them. Not quite easily, but you can see them uh, most reliably. Uh, find them in the area of the Pantanal. They are amazing. You you know where they have good trees, nesting trees, and feeding trees. That's where the macaw to be, right? And also, um, other sorts of birds, uh, such as uh, gray neck wood rails. I found this amazing shot of the amazing gray neck wood rail uh, picking the eyes, plucking the eyes of a fish that had been dropped by a heron. And this heron had been chased by uh, Karakara, and the Karakara chased it. It didn't get the fish because we approached it close by. And so the gray neck wood rail, a red cow wood rail by now, as the name has got changed, it was plucking the eyes of this big fish. I never stayed long enough to figure out what happened to the fish, but certainly one of one other bird of prey uh, took the fish. So other birds like the refreshing tiger heron, an immature catching fish on the riverbank easily as they drive by, and they don't get scared because they're used to the motion and to the movement of boats going up and down in the area. But also uh, beautifully and amazing, uh, birds like the five kingfisher in the area of Jaggerland, and you can find them in the most beautiful light as ever, sunset light or uh, or sunrise light as ever. If you're going, if you're moving out early, if you're an early bird, obviously. And um, uh, the kingfishers are amazing. I took these two pictures of a ring kingfisher and an Amazon kingfisher, and I love these pictures, not because I took them, because just because they uh, they look adorable. They look at Um Also, iguanas, uh, it's it's present in the areas of the Pantanal. Like I told Tom in the process this morning, I I like I love iguanas, but I don't like to see the whole extension of their body. I prefer to just take a close close look of their eye and see how they look like a dinosaur, this kind of a strange looking creature. And like this, that's the way I, like, I love them. And they're all over the place. If you if you feel your eyes and you move cruising by by boat, you can see them on the tree and it can easily approach them and get a photograph like that or even better. Um, also, um, one of the creatures that you see them by the hundreds, by the thousands, and by the millions in the entire, at the entire area of the Pantanal is a Paraguayan game, 
two very uh, typical behaviors of these gamers. Uh, one of them is the leech in its mouth, and you can see it's uh, you can probably not be able to see it because the resolution is not big enough, but the one on the left has got a leech in its mouth, and the one on the right is eating fish. That happens quite commonly in shallow uh, parts of jaguar lands. When you're cruising slowly, uh, looking for jaguars and giant otters, you find and suddenly your driver is pushing back full speed backwards because the game is chewing a large cutty or armored catfish like that. So these amazing shots you can get down to Jaguar Lands. One of, <laughs> coincidentally, one of the pictures that uh, Tom showed in his beautiful talk uh, was a uh, caiman, um, a caiman that had tried to eat a Brazilian porcupine, which is got a Brazilian porcupine has got a right side of the tail, and they climb trees so often, and they sleep up in trees and feed on leaves. And once in a while, I would think. He would come down to drink or maybe just swim across the river and then he'll luckily come across a caiman like that and then um, you know the end of the story. Caiman has got the toothpick for free. To meal with toothpick included. That's a good. Um, I also like to see other scenes uh, on Jaguarland that it's typically seen and I bet everyone that has been coming to Jaguarland with nature track has been able to find this. Uh, uh, when caimans die, they turn their belly upside down and uh, they start flowing down river. So these vultures, if you see caimans, caimans flowing down river, you can easily stop by and wait. Vultures will follow them and land in their bellies to start eating them by its guts. I think that is quite stunning as, as long as they far enough not to smell what they, the smell of the dead caiman, but I love that too. Um, other beautiful things you can see in the area, such as down the road, as you drive by with your safari truck, you can have, you can be fortunate to come across an anaconda sunning on the roads when the traffic isn't too busy or the, the large pickups speeding up down the road. We can find them sunning just down the road, stop, get off the safari vehicle, lay down on the floor and take your eye level photograph as, as everybody loves to do that. And I found this anaconda just on Jaguarland, uh, a few kilometers, no, no more than three kilometers, maybe four kilometers far from the hotel on the, near a big cattle, cattle ranch. And this anaconda was resting and sunning uh, on the riverbank easily. You could easily get a shot with your um, wide, wide angle lens. So, other creatures that you can find the most amazing behaviors, such as capybaras and cattle tyrants. Um, some birds would like to approach the capybara, sit on its head, and fly from the middle of the head and go for a horse fly and come back and go again for a horse, or should I call it capybara fly, and come back. And then also, that behavior is common in giant otters when. Uh, great kiski bees is trying to get scraps that's left over from the, it's going down water from the uh, giant otter feeding um, from the fish. And then I was sitting close by, trying to get a good angle of the fish, taking lots of stills. And I didn't intentionally took a picture of the kiski bee, but as I was pushing down the button, I got the kiski bee in the frame and I love it. Um, um, so this is uh, another bird that is typically common down the Jaguar lands and down the region of the Pantanal. It is the Wattle Jacana. We see them walking down, trotting down the lilies so often. And uh, once in a while, they also do the same, uh, trotting down the back, walking along the back of the capybara, uh, which is often resting on floating plants by the river on Black Lagoon, Black Channel. So incredible scenes like this can be easily, easily uh, watched if you got an eye, if you got a uh, good vibe for those things. Um, also, I'd like to show you some not 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 uh, close ups like having beautiful close ups. So the some of the South American loudest monkeys 
which is the black, golden and black power monkey, or simply known as the howler monkey. You can hear them before you see, and you will see, you remember that. You will hear them before you see in Jaguarland, but from Jaguarland, uh, in the Pantanal, you can see them uh, almost every morning or almost every day, depending on the weather, depending on what's going on with the climate. But they're pretty, pretty common in the area of the Jaguarland because it has the best uh, riverside or riverbank forest of the, of the entire Pantanal. Other creatures, um, other creatures that you unpredictably, unpredictably come across on Jack and the Pantanal are tapers. Tapers are very good swimmers and they can swim across rivers such as the Cuyaba River that could be over 100, 150 meters uh, wide. And they are powerful swimmers. And they we came across two in the same morning and with one of my net track groups on the left for the sunrise. And there we were. There wasn't even light enough to take a picture. And the skateboard came in facing us. And actually, now I remember one by the front and one by the back of the boat. So my our connected her eyes, they got a little bit lost because they didn't know where to look or where to take pictures. <laughs> I just got anyone that was easy. I got these. And later on, we got one at the entrance of the Black Lagoon. I'm sure some of you have been already to the Pantanal and you know what the word Black Lagoon means. The Black Lagoon is the Black Channel. It's one of the hot, hot spots for jackals. It's the first place we will go in the morning and the afternoon of the lake. Also, some of the striking uh, pictures uh, or memos of the Pantanal is one of the Brazil's big five, the giant otters. It's the best place in South America to see giant otters up close, and you can see them within five meters distance out from you. Depending on where you are, you can shoot them with wide, wide angle lens. It's just incredible. But to make sure you get a great shot, you could probably go mid, mid lens, mid range lens. This is um, the giant river otters. I had them eating armored catfish, one of their favorite favorite meals in the area of the Pantanal on Jaguarlan. And um, you can get shots like that on the trip with nature track coming to the Pantanal. It's just an amazing area to find giant otters. You will experience that as you come this year. Um, coming to Jaguarlan, uh, obviously, jaguars is the uh, the icing on the cake, right? And uh, I had I added these two scene, these two pictures of jaguars and two cups. I know it's one of the hardest things to see on Jaguarland, but luckily, Nature Track, my last Nature Track group last year, we were able to see a jaguar and two cubs. We filmed and photographed those, and they were able to name these two new cubs as from now on. Uh, they will be known by the name given by Nature Track clients. We have a whole ceremony of name rotation, and uh, it was very, very fun, very interesting to be able to name a cat and to be able to figure out what's going to happen to this cat in the in ten years coming up from now. Uh, sometimes it happens once uh, every two weeks that. Uh, one of the jaguars will climb a tree, Amber, or its its daughter, will be able to go up on the tree and rest and sleep and spend two, three hours and then suddenly stretch, change position, walk down, or maybe if a caiman come across from underneath the, the branch where she is, she will stretch, get ready, and jump on the caiman. So jaguars from Jaguarland, they use trees to rest, but also if they if the opportunity is it's possible, they will jump on the game and that easily. They will jump five or six meters from the top of the tree and coming down straight in the game. That's such a great show, such a great video. I will spend as many hours as I can if I see a jaguar like that. Last year, we watched this jaguar with nature track for four, four hours. This, this jaguar had a cub hidden in the bushes and I, I was aware that she could bring up the cub on the tree to teach the cub to do the same thing and go to be up there. So I was optimistic enough to 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 foresee that the mother the mother would bring the cub up there. And I love that. 
Um, other things, you can, incredible sites that you can see on Jaguar line are uh, Jaguar killing its main prey, which is a caiman, or secondly, capybara, or by chance, by any chance, if they come across an anaconda, which is I've seen only once in my lifetime, uh, guiding for nature, right? But caimans is one thing that it's happening once every other day, depending if the mother has cups, they are on a mission. They have a hungry, two little kitchens to feed. So once every every two days, once every other day, they'll have to go out and make a kill. And it's lovely when you have jaguar cups because they, they have that mission to feed two hungry cubs every day. Jaguars are great swimmers. I bet you didn't know they can swim that long. They can swim across the river. They can swim along the fastest or the strongest currents as you could ever imagine. And these jaguars, they can see a caiman floating on the deep water, jump on them from the three, five meters high bank and beat the caiman in the water. Jaguars are so powerful that they can beat the caiman, which is a water uh, habitat plant, uh, reptile, and they can beat them and bring them out to the land and barbecue them in the next bush. Jaguars are amazing. They have the most, the cat's most powerful bites of all the big cats, even bigger cats like lion and tigers, and jaguars have got the most powerful, powerful, powerful bites, and the came up with them, no, no chance to them. And uh, we found this, this jaguar walking along the sunbank, and we followed for nearly an hour uh, until she decided to go into the bushes. But for this last 60 minutes, we had the cat running, the cat jumping in the water, the cat sniffing, the cat scent marking, the cat uh, swimming, the cat playing with uh, butterflies and running along the sunbank. So it all depends that, that making the best of the deal you get in your hands. Um, and so Chagrinland is the place to see that. Um, the portrait that you want, if, if you want the Jaguar portrait, you could easily get that coming to, to the front of uh, with Nature Track. Nature Track will take you to the right place. And Jag, if that's the Jaguar that, that you fancy, um, that's what you can get. Plus, besides that, a ton of other things, just more than just Jaguars, it's a lot, there's a lot to see in the Pantanal diversity. I, I thank you very much. Very good evening, everyone. My name is Matt. I'm one of the operations managers at Nature Track HQ. Now, I know we've seen a fair amount of the Pantanal tonight, but I'm going to take you to a slightly different section of the um, of the area into the national park itself. So please bear with me. There will be a couple of repeats, but I've tried to choose some unique wildlife um, to separate uh, my talk from the others. So I was very lucky enough to uh, co-lead this tour in October of last year. And it's a very unique cruise. We use a single vessel to navigate our way up and down the main river. Um, and attached to the, the main vessel are skiffs, uh, so we can do boat trips um, in the morning and afternoon um, during this tour. And the main um, elements of the tour is obviously wildlife focused, and we of course go after the jaguars and we go after the birds as well, but uh, for the botanists especially, we also go after the giant water lilies shown on the right hand side of the image there. So there's plenty to see, of course, as I'm sure you are aware. So here is the um, outline itinerary. Um, so it's very similar to all the other Brazil tours we do to the Pantanal. Um, so I'm going to skip that bit. Uh, so we still go down the Trans Pantanal from Cueva down to Porto Joffrey. Um, and then we board the Panoramico. Um, and we have six nights on board the vessel. Um, and then we work our way back up the, Pan um, the Trans Pantanal, staying at South Wild Pantanal Lodge, which is the Ocelot um, location before ending back at Cueva and onwards to whichever place we end up. And it's important to note that you, oh, um, all the extensions that Tom would have mentioned earlier, whether it's Iguazu Atlantic or Giant Anteater, can be done before or after uh, this Pantanal cruise. So it's all very similar in that respect. So each day um, on board the vessel, uh, we have a morning outing, and that's usually before it gets light. So we're in the core Jaguar area. Uh, 
and that's within our first few days of being on the vessel. If our luck is in, uh, then we only have to spend one day there, and then we sail southwest down towards Bolivia. Uh, but if we want some better views, then we have the freedom to stay in the Jaguar core zone before moving on. So there's plenty of flexibility in our itinerary. Um, and if all things go well, we can come back to the Jaguar land um, for more views. Um, and as we sail down southwest, um, still morning and evening excursions, and during the heat of the day, that's when we get to relax. So you can either be in your room or you can be out on deck like I was, uh, trying to search the local wildlife, because um, you never know what you're going to see. So here's a, here is the Panoramico houseboat. So it has 12 ensuite cabins. So we max this um, group to uh, 23, 24, depends if a, a UK leader goes out. Normally it's not. We leave it up to the wonderful local guides we have in Brazil. Each room is equipped with king or twin beds, the all-important mini bar, and they are all air-conditioned as well. There's a large restaurant on board, which I will show shortly. And for those that need it, Wi-Fi is available pretty much throughout, unless the um, the vessel is moving in the more remoter parts. That's when it can be a bit iffy, but otherwise the Wi-Fi is very good on board indeed and as you can see from the vessel there is viewing on all on all decks so deck one two or the upper deck the monkey deck um and i very much advise you've been on the monkey deck at all times as i say you just never know what is going to happen so here's the restaurant all well equipped um and the chefs on board do a fantastic job um have breakfast lunch and dinner here uh, we ready head out otherwise unless we have a barbecue out on deck so here's the upper deck, and as you can see, it's shaded. Um, it can get quite breezy um, in this area, um, and it can rain as well. So um, it's always good to have that shelter there. But it does provide superb views left um, straight ahead or on the right for whatever ventures our way. And we did even see Jaguars um, on the Panoramico, so you don't have to be in the small skiffs. Uh, you can be lucky enough to see them from the main vessel itself. So if you are... If you don't have the ability to get in and out of um, a skiff, um, this tour could well suit you. So don't feel like you have to have um, extreme fitness to do this tour. It's a very relaxed tour um, and you can just enjoy yourself out on deck all day watching uh, the beautiful landscapes as you go by. Or in this case, you could just sit out on deck with your bins, camera and a beer. Um, I'm not sure who this was. Um, it may have been me. It may not have been. Um, OK, it was me. It was my birthday. I just did my first ever Jaguars, I treated myself to a late morning beverage. There we go. We can't all be perfect. And this is at the back of the vessel, um, a few jacuzzis and more sun lounges, but it can be quite hot during the day. So we tended to avoid this area, but it is there if you want it. And these are the skiffs we use. So they're they go in two, two, two. Um, so there's plenty of op opportunity to scan left, right, behind, or straight ahead because the chairs do swing. But it's not a health and safety concern. They are slow moving swings, <laughs> so um, there's no there's no risk at all. Um, wearing life jackets is compulsory, uh, but. Apart from that, um, you get fantastic views of the wildlife. And of course, when you're on um, a boat, it doesn't matter what size, the wildlife always tends to show much better uh, than whether um, than if you're out on foot. Um, so if you are a keen photographer, you can get some very nice photos of the wildlife. OK, so we board the vessel at Port of Joffrey in the top right there, and then we sail southwest uh, down the main river. And then we end up at the at the lower circle there, only a few miles away from Bolivia. So that thick white line on the left there, that is the Bolivian border. Um, so we have to remind ourselves um, when we get down there just where we are in the world and how few people um, get to, um, to come to this area this area. So this is the backwaters of the Pantanal National Park, and it's exceptionally remote. Um, it states in the title, this is a very remote area. And as we move towards Bolivia, um, the, the Cayman numbers are deplete. So that means the Jaguar's num the Jaguar numbers also deplete as well. So in terms of the, the key wildlife, we would have already seen that. Um, back around Porto Joffrey in the Jaguar zone. Uh, so now we're encountering slightly different species. And for the keen birders, uh, the closer we get to Bolivia, the more different species um, occur. 
So here are some species down uh, the transplant snail. I've just included this one slide in case um, it was of interest. Uh, so we've seen the true peel tonight, the stun bittern, and uh, that's at the ocelot's location and very um, easy to see there. Um, the bottom left, lowland tapir, all very nice cracking views of that individual as it basked in the sun in the lake. Um, and then the great potus. I'm not sure if you've seen that tonight, but um, if you look very closely, you can just see the chick um, at the front of the mother there. So really cool bird. And as I say, we do target the jaguars on this tour. Um, so say so we go after all wildlife, but one or two days at the beginning of the cruise is devoted uh, to finding jaguars. And these are some of my photos. Um, all of the photos tonight are mine. Um, so these are the views one can expect. Um, and as I say, we saw we only had four skiff excursions in the core jaguar zone. Um, the rest was towards the national park where there are fewer jaguars. So four excursions in the Jaguar zone, and we had nine different individuals. So it just goes to show um, how exceptional the area is for this incredible predator. And you see all different sorts of um, activity. Um, uh, I can't think of the word, but uh, we saw a family group. So the top two photos here is the mother and cub, and there was another cub uh, playing about in the background as well. We saw stalking and hunting, the bottom left there, and we saw hunting in action, uh, the bottom right. But we also saw a courting couple. Uh, we saw all sorts. Um, it really was a treat. And giant river otters as well, probably my favourite. And I think Marcus said it was his favourite as well. These really are class animals. And you do see them in the remote backwaters of in the national park. But the wildlife here is not used to human activity. So things like giant otters are more skittish in, in the national park. But around uh, Jaguar Zone, they're, of course, um, more used to humans. Uh, let me just move this out of the way. So I'm just going to play you a very short video. Um, hopefully it plays. There we go. But well, that makes me smile even to this day. Um, a really cool sight there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Giant River Otters, that group of 12, it was a, an incredible um, family size. And we had them all to ourselves. Um, so fantastic, especially in the Pantanal. A few of the birds you can see along the cruise, Hyacinth McCalls. We've seen tonight Bareface Curacao, top right. That's a male bird. Um, and Wattle Chicana on the bottom right. And then the top left, a crane hawk, a really smart bird of prey. Um, and the more elusive, um, but in the remote backwaters, you can get good views of the sun grebe, um, a more cryptic species in this region. At the bottom left, a southern screamer with beautiful sunset in the background. And for the keen birder, uh, six swift at uh, the bottom right. And this is quite a range restricted species, more so seen in Bolivia. And as I said, the closer you get to Bolivia, the more there is overlap. Uh, between the two countries avifauna um, so a really good opportunity to see um, a different range of species some that you definitely will not get um, around the jaguar core zone and of course jabaroos they are dotted about all over the show but it's really impressive to see the nests and um, the chicks as well which are probably a third grown um, but not the most attractive either but i'm sure the mother will disagree and this is the landscape we can expect um, now in the National Park. So we're firmly in the National Park. We've signed the papers and we're in. Um, and this is the habitat we can find. So it's very hilly. It's well forested. And in honesty, there's just no one else around. It is you and and the countryside. Um, it really is a splendid. And you know, you're always seeing stuff, even though you know, the Jaguars and the Cayman aren't present in big numbers here. There's still a chance of finding those, but you, you're coming across new stuff, which is what this tour is all about. And one a new subject that uh, we do target is the giant water lily. Now, of course, back in the fires um, during the uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, the giant water lily did suffer um, in that in the Pantanal National Park. Uh, but 
they are a very robust um, plant, so they do come back um, in good numbers. And thankfully this year, uh, this was the first year in a couple where we located uh, the giant water lily. And it's amazing to think that um, they can be uh, from tip to tip of the main leaf, it can be two meters wide. Um, and believe it or not, it, it only takes seven days for that to grow. So it's an exceptional um, uh, plant. Um, and as I say, we do set out to try and see it. Normally, we need the help of the of local villagers who know where they are, because since the decline, uh, they're much more difficult uh, to find. So we use local help, uh, which almost guarantees a sighting. And thankfully, in October, we we succeeded. And here's just another view for you. Also out and about um, in the backwaters, uh, some prehistoric rock art, um, if you're interested in that. Uh, so the local guides know all about this and they take you to the sites and educate one on them. And so this is just the general scenery um, in, the, in the national park. So that's Bolivia in the background. Um, and you, know, you, you depart the vessel around, around 3 p.m. It gets dark about six, half past six, something like that. So you spend a good chunk of time um, out just wandering around all these various waterways. Um, and then by the end of it, uh, we have a nice sundowner. Um, and this was in a, a particular lo a particular location um, with Bolivia, just a couple of miles across the lake in front of us. And that's what I said earlier. It's about recognizing where you are um, I mean, in the world and just, just taking it all in um, and enjoying all the wildlife that goes with it. A few more views of the sunsets and say that's pretty much it for me on the uh, Pantanal cruise. Yes, it is. So I'll leave you with this final slide of the sunset, but hopefully that gives you some insight on the differences um, of this tour. Um, so if you like a very relaxed cruise, um, if you'd like to see jaguars, if you're into your plants full of giant water lilies and all the other bird life that comes with it, then uh, this is the tour for you. But please do phone up the office or email me um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on this tour. So thank you very much for listening. I'll hand you over to Tom uh, for the Q&A. Thank you very much. So let's work through a few um, few questions now. Let me pick some up here. So first of all, one for you, Kevin. A couple of people have asked this. Um, your your camera setup and the lenses for your your amazing photos in that uh, in that show. Yeah, thank, thanks, Tom. Thank you, uh, folks, for commenting on that. Um, so, uh, I I tend to focus, if that's the right word, the trips I tend to lead now have very much a photography uh, interest associated with them. Uh, for those of you who are particularly interested in what I use photographically, I use a Sony camera system with uh, most of those pictures that I, I shot or I showed in my talk were with a, a Sony 200 to 600 millimeter zoom lens. Uh, some of which will have had a teleconverter associated with it. And also for the wider angle shots, for example, the um, the Milky Way shot at the end, that was taken again with a Sony camera body, but with a wide angle Sony lens. Uh, the other thing, to, before you carry on, sorry, Tom, is okay. um, being on a boat uh, most of the time, uh, it's impossible to use a tripod. So you have to think, how am I going to hold the camera still? Now, if you're steady and can hold it steadily with your arms, then that's great. Uh, monopods are often useful in that situation. So I'll have used a monopod, uh, you know, some of the time, at least when I was on the boat. You're going to get some sort of rocking of the boat from time to time, uh, you know, as people sort of lean across or, or sort of you know, try and get a, a, an angle from the boat that you're on as well. So you've got to bear that in mind. But using a, a reasonably high shutter speed will help overcome a lot of that. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I think I'll go to, go to Marcus with this one. Someone's asking about um, the length of the boat trips on the smaller on the smaller boat from the Flotel. So if you could put a, a typical day um, from the Flotel, Marcus, how would you how would you say a typical day would go um, life on the Flotel? Um, I think a typical day we would, we would go out for sunrise and then stay there until from maybe four and a half, five hours in the morning, uh, starting by six o'clock and then coming back by 11, 11 30, 11 30, uh, because we have a certain number of hours to 
to run through the day. So we'll back we'll move it back by eleven, eleven thirty, maybe twelve at the latest, depending on what's going on out there. If let's say that um I'm supposed to go back by eleven and the Jaguar's about to jump. I know that there's a hunting cat, we will say, no matter what. Um, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll see the kill. And then we'll go back, take a rest, have a good meal, and then have a snooze uh, between 1 and 2.30, 1 and 2 o'clock. We normally have a break. And that time, if we're charging their batteries, downloading, emptying cars, and, and then getting ready to go out by 2.30, in some months are extremely hot, then I do uh, longer mornings and shorter afternoons. Because usually when, on Jaggerland, it's there's so much more activity in the morning. So I I'd rather do if it depends depends on what's going on. We're always asking the boat drivers; they know what's what's going on. So if they, it's worth staying longer for the morning, go do other rides, please. And depending on the temperature, we'll, we'll try to be a little bit flexible, right? So that we can see as much as we can and not and not um and not burning our clients too much. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Um just have a look through some more questions here. Yeah, so a couple of a couple of points about the season, a couple of sort of questions sort of relating to that and the time of year to visit. As you'll see, we have a range of, of dates, particularly for our um, for our Just Jaguars uh, tour that run sort of start in June and then run through and finish in sort of end of October into early November. And throughout that time, you have a brilliant opportunity to see all the species we mentioned this evening. But the weather does differ. So June is, is the sort of start of the of the dry season, as Marcus explained in his slides. It's a little bit cooler then, maybe a few more um, less people around, and then it's sort of drying out through the season. And typically September, October, the the hottest months in recent years. Marcus, would you agree? Yeah, I do. I agree. Yeah, that's typically the season. And the rain sort of you typically comes towards the end of November into December. So we're visiting from that sort of June to to, to sort of early November um, period, um, and brilliant sightings uh, throughout is a sort of is a sort of answer to the to the season question so you've got a quite a wide range of, of dates to, to choose from and months to months to visit there so i hope i hope that clears that one up just check any other yeah group group size came came up so all of our tours that involve the pantanal we have a, a maximum group size of, of 12 and that's for to be nicely spaced on the boat everyone has a perfect view from the smaller spotting boat that we head out on from the from the float out and of course the lot larger group possible on on matt's cruise there that's it it work, works very well I'm trying to think of a question for, for you matt Don. um no that's <laughs> right there's a question on anti-malarials uh, that ian has put on oh, in the yeah. chat yeah yeah so and I can I can answer this one again. Um, so yeah, there's no need for anti-malarials in, in the Pantanal, um, or or even if even that area of the southern Amazon is still south of of, of where malaria is a is an issue. But for the, certainly for the Pantanal, um, yeah, people people don't tend to take anti-malarials. We still always have to say check with your GP, but typically, um, you know, people you know, people don't take them there. So it's it's easy on that front. No no visa required. No anti-malarials. So it's uh, yeah, it's. It's easy, easy on that front. It's probably, uh, uh, Tom, um, if you don't know, I'm actually a, a retired physician uh, in the, if, speaking to the audience now. So I should have asked you, go. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what am I thinking? <laughs> tropical medicine wasn't my particular forte, but it's always worthwhile. Uh, if you're doing a trip into the tropics, get the latest information before you go on that particular trip, because things do change. But generally speaking, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Great, thank you, Kevin. That's great. Okay, I've got a, a question here from David. Are, are non are non meat eaters catered for? Um, my, you know, the short answer there would be from yes, from my experience. Um, yep, likewise. Oh, just on the, how, uh, how, how did you get on Matt when you were last there? Yeah. Yep, on the Panoramico. Yep, that's not a problem. If veggies yeah. are very well catered for. Yeah, you, yeah, you won't struggle. 
<laughs> you definitely won't go hungry in the pants now. Yeah, no, the food's, food's plentiful. Often lots of sort of rice dishes and beans and vegetables and um, yeah, fish and and uh, chicken. So yeah, you know, a wide range. No, you you have no problem. Um, it's no problem for for, for vegetarians. Yeah, great. Um, I think that's probably it. Let's just check out. Missed any? That's one on the big five. Here. One from Lillian has just come into the uh, question. Yeah, Lillian, yeah, just... yeah, so the, the the Big Five tour, we haven't had a chance to cover that too much, but that will spend time you know, at the Wolf Camps as well as in the Pantanal. And we are, you know, we're, we're targeting there the um, you know, Jaguar, the giant otter, tapir, the main wolf, and the giant anteater. So your you, you, your question about adding our giant anteater extension, um, on that tour, we're, we're staying a little bit longer, a bit more focused in the northern end of the Transpantanera Road for giant anteater. So, um, yeah, typically you you we 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 should succeed there with you know, with with giant anteater. It's a point worth mentioning. There are lots of extensions. Um, I'm you know, very often putting together sort of detailed itineraries with extensions um, uh, to 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 extend your time there in the Pantanal. The giant anteater one is very worthwhile. Adding extra nights in the trans on the Transpantanera is is well worth it. There's so much there besides giant anteater as well any extra time there is is worthwhile you might like to fly out a day early to get over the flights and see some more wildlife before you start and start the tour in a more in a more fresh um, state that's worth doing as well so lots of options but so um, yeah the dates are up for the for the big five tour uh, fantastic fantastic itinerary um Ian thanks for the question there in the chat Ian do you see Hoatzin on many trips um Hoatzin in the in the southern Amazon, from the in, from the com, from the combination tour there, the birds and mammals of the the the, uh, the Amazon and Pantanal, very good chance of Watson on that uh, on that tour. I think that's. Uh... Uh, just which airline uh, we use to Brazil? Yeah, good spot, Matt. Um, airlines we 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 typically as standard we fly with LATAM, LATAM or BA. I know Kevin mentioned earlier he flew with BA, um, either. But typically that fits perfectly with the itinerary is a, a, a LATAM flights overnight flights both ways. Um, if you wanted to fly BA, that's possible. You just need an extra night at the end of the at the end of the holiday, um, and f fly back the next day. So yeah, LATAM or BA there. Yeah, that's um. That's great. So I, I, I think we'll, I think we'll leave it there. Um, any more questions? If we've, if we've missed anything or, 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 or anything at all, you, you want covered, please, please call the office. Email, um, Tom at naturetrek.co.uk, and I'll, I'll help you with anything else there. Um, yeah, and that, that's it. I'd like to, yeah, thank our speakers this evening. Um, thank you very much, um, Matt, very Kevin, much. and Marcus from Brazil. Thanks very much for getting involved. I know that was a, a, a little bit daunting at times, but thank you so much for joining. And um, thank yeah, despite much. the yeah. slight technical hitch, I hope all the viewers and, and listeners um, still yeah in, enjoyed that. So that that's it for the for the roadshow. This is our final online um, roadshow this season. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in and making it such a success. We've had over a hundred um, devices tuning into every single show, which is amazing. We're we're absolutely over the moon with that. And of course, we brought back our our in person talks as well this season. So we've been on the road talking in person, doing them both. So it's been very, very successful, and we've had a, a very, very positive start to the year. So it's all thanks to everyone uh, tuning in uh, for that. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. For that. If you'd like to see us in person, we're actually at the Destinations Travel Show at Olympia in London um, from the 1st to the 4th of February. If you wanted to come along to that, I will be delighted to, to meet you there um, if you can. But uh, I think we'll, we'll leave it there. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.